Mr. Speaker, my point first is that, uh, and I was here this morning when we had the debate on the bill, and there are members, like now shouting the highest, like the Honorable Sankok, who supported the bill wholehearted. All of them. And praised it and did everything. Honorable Bayer, please. Yes. Now, they are the ones now shouting in the presence of others who are not here as if debate was curtailed. And in all this, debate was not curtailed. So the first point, uh, Mr. Speaker, is to give you a direction. Do we kill the processes merely because there are members who are absent who feel that they, they, did, they were not heard? Because everything that I'm hearing is not so much about process. It's about the content. And they were not here. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, uh, is your direction in terms of how to determine the leave of the house. Where something needs to be done with the leave of the house, only seven people I saw stand to support uh, uh, that idea. So, because the rules have always been, of course, is it to be determined that leaves mean unanimity of everyone, so that if it's objected by one person, it cannot move. Because unless that is the, unless that is, the Honorable Chungwa is really, really behaving as if he's in a marketplace. We were all quiet when he was speaking. And he's a ranking member. He should surely allow others to speak. Because if you are right, your point will sail through. You don't have to shout. So my point, Honorable Speaker, is do we determine leave of the house by requiring that there must be unanimous decision on, on it? Or is it simply uh, on the determination uh, by the speaker? Because it appears to me that the majority would have wanted, uh, you know, to go in, in that way. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, I really am happy with the guidance you've given in terms of what the House Business Committee did. Because it is true that bills should not stay in committees forever, especially those that need to be fast-tracked. But when then they've taken the move and brought it to the floor of the House, I thought it's in keeping with that decision that it is moved fast, not to again stall it on the floor of the House. So I'm getting confused in terms of what the House Business Committee actually intended. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. No, no, sorry, so not, not, what's your point of order, Honorable Shumwa? Honorable Speaker, maybe just to inform my good friend and colleague, Honorable Tienda Molo. Uh, leave of the House, Honorable Speaker, and I'll just read for him, standing order number two. Leave of the House means there being no objection by any member, either with the sympathy of the Speaker or with the support of at least five other members. And being a good and accomplished lawyer, and uh, the standing orders are in very simple English, I thought uh, it would be very easy for the Honorable Tender Molo to understand that. But Honorable Speaker, and also to, to, to the Chair of the Committee, Honorable Speaker, it's completely out of order for the Chair of the Committee to be imputing improper motive on any member who has risen to his place like the Honorable Owen Bayer to speak to some of the issues and the amendments. And the Honorable Chair is misleading the House that indeed amendments were in the report. And we know, Honorable Speaker, amendments become amendments of the House once they are approved by the Office of the Speaker and published on the order paper. The amendments on this order paper were only published when this order paper was published last night. Therefore, it is completely misleading for the Chair to be misleading the House and Kenyans out there who do not know that they may be the Honorable Owen Bayer or any other member had not read the report. We read, and that is why members want time to be able to propose amendments. Honorable Speaker, now that the leave of the House has been denied, it is only fair that the Chair uh, ceases being too emotional on this matter and allows the House, because this, this legislation is to be legislated by the House not by his committee, not by the member for Limuru. It is for posterity and for the benefit of Kenyans. He may not be aware that even members within his own committee are proposing further amendments to the committee's amendments. In fact, I, I was shocked when the vice chair, uh, Honor Bugedi, behind here, was telling us that I never agreed. I never signed. I have not signed. Uh, and I don't know whether she has signed uh, the report or not, or she was uh, speaking in response to the issues that have been raised. But indeed, there are issues, Honorable Speaker, that the chair 
and the leader of majority must desist from uh, rushing us into a process that will not be beneficial to the people of Kenya. And the issues of statelessness, uh, as have been raised, don't just affect the people in Kilifi. I have constituents in Kabete, in Mugoga, some in the Honorable Mwadi's constituents in the Shona community that has now moved to Rironi, in Keno, here in Harlingham, the Shona community is the Honorable Speaker. And as much as we have addressed some of the issues, the issues that we do not want to be rushed into, unless you have other ulterior motives that you are not telling the people of Kenya.